everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. What's going on, everybody? We're back with Believe in Colts. Thank you, Cassidy, for the new introduction. I'm here with my guy, Gerard Powers, once again. How's it going, Gerard? Man, going good. Going, going good. Glad to be here. Absolutely. And special guest today, the voice of your Indianapolis Colts, Matt Taylor. Matt, how are you doing this fine morning? I'm doing well. It's great to be with you guys. Uh, like we, I said before we started here, I don't have uh, a, a camera on the phone or the computer that I'm, I'm using right now. So just audio today, but it's good to see you, uh, Lawrence, and it's good to see you, Gerard. Uh, you know, you, like I said, offline before we started, you were one of my favorite guys in the locker room because of, you know, stand up guy, good times, bad times, thoughtful answers. So it's good to be with you guys talking ball. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Awesome. You. Well, today we're going to be talking about, uh, obviously, the training camp that's happened this these past couple weeks. But before we get into it, I want everybody to remember that Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, events, with the first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news in every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's B L E A V 5 0, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Well, Matt, uh, I was there for a few days. My other co-host was there for a few days. It's been a really uh, wild training camp the last two weeks. Uh, what are some surprises that you have seen um, so far this this year at training camp? Well, so far, it's it's really been non-surprising and I, and I mean that in a great way because the last couple of uh, training camps have been you know full of surprises and off the field you know distractions if you will I mean obviously uh, playing through a pandemic that's been difficult and then last year this time you're talking about bone structures and surgeries on feet and things like that so it's actually been a very normal uh, you know focused on football training camp to this point we we've joked you know, sort of offline, you know, like the, the biggest piece of news so far has been, you know, Darius Leonard changing his name or wanting to go by Shaquille Leonard now. I mean, that's if that's your biggest piece of news, I mean, th things are going well because knock on wood, knock on the hardest surface next to you. I mean, there's been no major injuries uh, to, to speak of. I know Mike Strawn and Shaq Leonard are still on PUP, but we were, you know, six, seven practices in and there's been nothing major it's been all normal it's been about the uh ascension of matt ryan and his comfort level in the offense how is he feeling and you know are the uh, young uh, receivers and the pass catchers how are they coming along so it's actually been you know non-wild non-eventful and it's it's been a breath of fresh air for for people like me that have to make sense of all of these wild stories that make national headlines the last couple of off seasons or you know, the beginning of, of training camp. So it's, it's, it's been good in a good way that it's been kind of boring and I'll take boring all day long. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you talk about uh, how, how there's not many distractions going on. And one of those reasons why just being in the locker room and knowing how the, the coach culture is uh, it's always been that way, but, you spoke about Matt Ryan a little bit. It's been a big offseason with some good additions uh, that, that we've added to our team. How have they came and adapted to the culture or who is stepping out in a leadership role um, that, that's making things seem a little bit different compared to what we've been going through in the past? Yeah, I mean, Michael Pittman Jr., you know, he had 1,000 yards last year and he doubled all of his, you know, big uh, production totals from his rookie season to last year. You know, thousand yard guy had over 80 receptions, you know, doubled his uh, more than doubled his uh, touchdown total from one to six, from 20 to 2021. 20, and he just looks way more comfortable. And last year he was good, but it just looks like he's ready for a lot more. And he you was know, a big body guy. He's deceptive with the ball in his hands. And I think that, you know, those throwing sessions in the spring, and we can't downplay the the effects of the, the spring having on this team. The fact that they got a traditional, normal offseason workout program in this year, 
um, is, is so big, especially when you have a new quarterback for the fifth straight year and just time on task that this team has had so far that they didn't have last year due to the pandemic and due to injuries at the beginning of training camp. So all of those throwing sessions with Michael Pittman Jr. and Matt Ryan looked to really been paying off so far. Um, and you can say that about the rest of the receiving core as well. And, you know, it's we, we've talked about it ad nauseum. I'm sure you guys have as well with you know the Colts sort of gambling on this young group of receivers. And, you know, they've taken on the approach that just because they haven't doesn't mean they can't. Now, you know, with more things are being thrust on their uh, their shoulders. Desmond Patman, Mike Strawn, when he gets back healthy, obviously Paris Campbell needs to prove that he can stay healthy. It's it's not a question on whether or not he can play. It's just obviously being available. Ashton Doolin has had some really good catches so far. Alec Pierce looks to be ahead of that rookie curve. So it's all positive right now in camp. It's you know there it, it's a it's a it's a big puzzle as you know Gerard right I mean it's you, you're not really going to have the full answer to things until about three or four weeks into the regular season on whether or not it's you know this gamble is going to pay off um, but so far so good you know the offense has definitely had their moments against the Colts defense in camp and that's a really good Colts defense from a personnel standpoint. Um, so it's, it's all positive. And you, then you throw in the tight ends with Alec Ogletree earning some first team run, uh, with Matt Ryan and company and, um, you know, Jelani Woods making plays. And then I think a, a bigger year, a big jump from year one to year two with Kylan Granson. So the young pass catchers look good, but again, it's early. We've only had two days in pads, no preseason games, no regular season games. So the jury's still out, but you know, we're starting to have more puzzle pieces to put in the in the big picture of things. So we talked about, you know, new pieces and also wide receivers. So we could go ahead and look at a pairing that's that's happened quite a bit this offseason. And that is Stefan Gilmore being kind of one on one for the most part that I have noticed with the rookie Alec Pierce. What has that matchup looked like? Yeah, you know, Frank Reich talked about that the other day, and it's 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 not something that the Colts have been too intentional about. It's sort of just kind of happened that way. I mean, JP, you can obviously attest to that. You know, sometimes, you know, there's there's two or three days where it just seems like you're going up against the same guy in terms of scheme or formation. But yeah, I mean, it's a great test. I mean, the more obviously the more times a rookie like Alec Pierce can go up against a former defensive player of the year, that's a good thing. And you know, he, he played against Sauce Gardner in practice every day at Cincinnati. You know, he's taken fourth overall from that great program. Um, and, and, you know, Alec was very candid after practice a few days ago as well, saying there's times where I'm head to head, you know, out on an island with uh, Stefan Gilmore. And he's so savvy. He's been around so long that he knows what I'm doing before I do it. And I think some of that has to deal with that, you know, at this point in camp, the, the defense has a really good idea of what the Colts offensive playbook looks like. But, you know, there's there's certain things that, you know, when you based on how you line up or where your eyes are going pre-snap, you know, a guy like Stefan Gilmore can get a pretty good read of, of what's about to come. Um, so it's a good thing that, you know, that matchup has occurred more often than not. And, you know, Frank Reich said that Alec Pierce is ahead of that rookie curve like we talked about, and they're throwing a lot on his plate. You know, the first five or six weeks, it's, it's all about digestion in the playbook. You know, now it's going to be kind of funneling in, you know, schematically to what the Colts do well and executing at a high level their their core set of plays. But there's no question that Alec Pierce needs to be a top two, top three receiver uh, within this offense for it to have success. Um, kind of bigger picture, one of the things that has stood out to me, and it's not a surprise, I thought it would be this, this way uh, when, when Matt Ryan signed with the Colts. But, you know, it, it's a very – democratic offense you know a lot of guys are getting involved and again it's not a surprise that's how frank reich wants to be and that's how matt ryan wants to be i mean i i think every day in 11 on 11 sessions there's at least five or six guys catching at least one pass um that's been frank reich's mo dating back to when he was the oc with the eagles you know matt ryan i think in 2016 set an nfl record uh, completing a touchdown pass to 13 different pass catchers. So it's going to be spread it around. You know, it's it, this offense is not really meant for a guy to get, 
you know, 1,400 receiving yards and then a big drop off after that. It's going to be tight ends. It's going to be running backs. Everybody's involved. And so far with Matt Ryan at the helm, that's playing out. Thank you for watching Gerard Powers and I here on Believe in Colts, part of the Believe Podcast Network. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe if you're not subscribed, and tag that notification bell so that you're notified next time we upload a video or go live. And don't forget you can hit that little red share button, help us out a lot with exposure and getting our stuff out to more fans. Now, let's get back to the video. Um... I know we got a bunch of questions for the offense, and I think all the fans are kind of waiting to see how Matt Ryan fits in it. But just staying on the defensive side of things right now, you were just talking about Stephon. Uh, Gus Bradley's system, you know, everybody knows it's more, he's more of a 4 3, cover 3 uh, type of guy. And when we're talking about Stephon Gilmore, we talked about it a little bit how he can just match up and just take care of his side of the field. How do you see Gus uh, changing his system a little bit to fit Stephon's needs? Yeah, I don't I don't think you have to. I mean, I think you can. I mean, I think the biggest difference within this scheme compared to Matt Eberflus as it pertains to the secondary is I think you're going to see more press man to man. And then obviously with Stefan Gilmore, I mean, that that's his fit. I mean, he's an ideal fit for the cover three He brings speed. You know, he's like 6'1", 210. He brings versatility to the position. He's comfortable in the zone and press man-to-man. And quite frankly, that's how he you know, earned that status of defensive player of the year just three years ago. So I think he can absolutely thrive in this scheme, you know, put him out on the island. And I don't, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to me to watch how this unfolds. You know, I don't think it's going to be – I don't think Gilmore is going to be, you know, a Kenny Moore in terms of – participation you know Kenny Moore never comes off the field he's either outside or inside you know when you're in sub packages um you know I I, I think at this stage you know Gilmore is going to play maybe 70 to 80 percent of the snaps but when he's out there obviously you can still count on him to play at a high level and you know last year you know the year before and last year dealing with that injury and then got traded to the Carolina Panthers but, you know, uh, Ed Dodds, Morocco Brown, when they spoke a few weeks ago, they talked about, hey, when he was healthy last year, he was still getting it done. Now, he was on a bad team towards the end of the season, but the tape still showed the Colts, you know, he was still worthy of being brought in and signing a healthy, you know, contract and, and free agency. So I think his expertise in press should really complement Gus Bradley's defense. So you've got that on the back end. And then in the front end, you've got Yannick Ngakwe, which is going to help everybody across the board. You know, the development of Quiddy Pay going up against right tackles instead of left tackles. It's going to help DeForest Buckner not see so many double teams in the middle. So I think with the improvement in the pass rush and then improvement in terms of personnel and scheme in the back end, you know, with the with the corners and safeties. I really think this this defense has a chance to make a big jump and finish in the top 10. So you just got done discussing Yannick and, you know, uh, how that's going to improve the, that defensive line. One of the big questions coming into this offseason was the left tackle, you know, especially after we picked up Matt Ryan. We've got Matt Pryor and we got Bernard Ryman over there. I know that Pryor's getting the majority of the ones, but I'm just curious – from your vantage point, have how has the development of those two guys been so far? Yeah, with Pryor, you know, it's 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 something that is beneficial to him because he's been, you know, sort of that that Joe Wrights or or Joe Haig Swiss Army knife, you know, late round draft pick. You're trying to just make a roster, have some staying power, you know, prove your versatility and flexibility. That's how you, you know, stay around in the NFL. But now this opportunity, you know, is really good for him because now he can focus on playing one position. The Colts need him to focus on playing one position, and they made him a priority really early on in uh, free agency. They brought him back in March, and they said, "Hey, we're going to bring you back for a year, but we want we want you to focus your body on playing left tackle, your footwork on playing left tackle." And so he kind of joked. Um, in the off season, hey, the the more you can do in the league, the less you get paid. And so he's really excited about, you know, playing exclusively at left tackle. He looks sleeker. He looks slender. 
And I know he doesn't have a lot of experience playing left tackle in the NFL. In fact, he only has two career starts at that position, but he doesn't look like a fish out of water at all. You know, he's holding his own when you go up against Unique and Gakwe, whether that's in one on one drills or in team drills. He really looks like a left tackle now. And I think so far, so good. It's it's a very viable option. Um, the Colts are asking a lot of him, but I think it's going to help tremendously, you know, when you're on the left side of that line with a guy like Quentin Nelson, you know, a generational guard can kind of help you and, you know, stabilize that side of the offensive line. And I, I also think schematically with Matt Ryan, I think it's going to be a lot like, you know, Phillip Rivers in 2020 or like how Tom Brady and the Patriots operated things towards the tail end of, of his tenure there in New England, it's going to be a lot of three- and five-step drops or a lot of shotgun, and it's going to be quick diagnosis, nowhere to go with the football, pinpoint accuracy, you know, balls out in two and a half seconds. So obviously that should help you know, the overall pass protection and the left tackle holding up you know, with a guy like Matt Pryor. So as you said, he's taking a majority of the, the uh, run with the first-team offense. In fact, to this point, he's taken all of the reps. Bernard Ryman's running with the twos. Ryman's, you know, he's, he's having an up-and-down camp, as you would expect from a rookie. Um, I think more ups than downs, but he certainly has his moments. Um, and he's taking it all in. He spoke after practice a few days ago that, you know, the NFL speed, there's a lot that he's, you know, trying to compartmentalize with. And um, it, it, it's normal. I mean, the fact is he's only he only has a year and a half, basically, of playing left tackle because the 2020 season, when he moved from tight end to tackle, that was a COVID season. and He only played five or six games. So um, to be expected so far with Matt Ryan or uh, excuse me, with a Bernard Ryman. And uh, if I had to give a leg up right now, it would be Matt Pryor because simply he has four years of experience playing in the NFL and obviously trying to master in, in short order that left tackle spot. Matt, we talked about some of the additions, whether it's the draft, free agency that, you know, and came in to change this team uh, for the good. That's been exciting to hear about. But uh, I think we are starting to forget about some of the coaches that, you know, was brought in to kind of help bring back that old coach culture. Uh, you talk about Mike Mitchell, Reggie Wayne, Cato June, and a lot forget John Fox was hired. How have the new coaches came in and adapted to the culture and helping the young guys out uh, as they go on their journey through camp and getting ready for the season? Well, it's it's funny you say that because you said culture. That That's the first thing that popped into my head as well because Mike Mitchell was here, and I know he didn't have a – a long tenure with the Colts, but man, he played at a high level. And that year, the Colts, you know, they started in the doldrums one and five. And then it's, it's almost like as soon as he came, you know, I, I'm sure it was, um, you know, th those things kind of coincided with the Colts getting onto a little bit of a roll there and made the playoffs and had a very successful 2018 campaign. You know, I remember like a guy like Quincy Wilson just raved about Mike Mitchell, you know, letting him know sort of the nuances of how to prepare, how to watch film, how to get better, how to be a professional, how to carry yourself. So from a culture standpoint there, it's helped. And then Cato June and Reggie Wayne, I mean, those guys speak for them, uh, speak for themselves, especially Reggie, right? I mean, they can speak to the culture and how things were, how they used to be. You know, the, the standard of winning 12 games every year, winning the AFC South, hosting playoff games, they can speak to that. I mean, you were a teammate of Reggie, so, I mean, he's just he just exudes, you know, professionalism and playing at a high standard and holding guys accountable, you know, whether that was teammates back in the day or, or now, you know, players that he's coaching. So it's really fun to watch how those guys specifically are rubbing off on the team. And then, you know, with Gus Bradley coming in, he's brought his guys. And I think that's good. The, the defensive staff doesn't have to acclimate to Gus Bradley. They don't have to learn the scheme because they have, you know, master's degree in the scheme because Ron Milas and Richard Smith They've basically basically been, you know, with with Gus every step of the way, whether that's with the Chargers, Raiders, and now here with the Colts. Um, and also, too, Unique Ngakwe's been with Gus a ton. And then Brandon Faison, who's in line to be that third corner when the Colts go sub packages, he's got a master's degree in the defense as well with Gus Bradley. I think it's 56 games all with Gus. So we joke, it's like in Gus we trust with a lot of these 
players and, and the staff members too. So you can see that the foundation was put in on defense in the spring and now they're, they're, you know, putting in, excuse me, more, uh, complex, um, you know, things and aspects of the defense. They're getting a little bit more nuanced. And again, I just, uh, that, that, that time on task in May and June was so beneficial for this team with a new defense that they just didn't have, you know, back in 20 and 2021 because of the ongoing pandemic surrounding things. This channel is proudly sponsored by the Backroom Collection. They do beautiful sports canvas art with football, basketball, baseball, and other sports themes. Special orders are accepted and autograph pieces are available. Many Indianapolis Colts signed pieces will be available beginning in November. Just use your discount code CL10 to purchase the pieces you want to spice up your living area. That's CL10. So I'm going to take a moment real quick before we continue. I want to uh, say that if you're listening to this on an audio podcast somewhere, that's awesome. Thank you so much. But make sure you go check out the Lawrence Owen YouTube channel and find this video. Because those of you that are watching right now, as you see, I have some signature shirts here. I've got two of them that I got signed by a bunch of guys uh, on last Saturday's practice, including Frank Reich, uh, Ryan Kelly, uh, we got Jelani Woods, we got uh, Bobby o uh, Okereke, and then, of course, our guy Matt Taylor signed them both as well. I will be giving both of these shirts out to those of you watching this right now on the YouTube channel in the comments make sure you type in believe in colts b-l-e-a-v-i-n colts and make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit like on the on the on the like and then i will announce on the next video who the winners are speaking of matt taylor let's talk about you discussed brandon facey on how's he been so far this this camp yeah, like I said, he's in the running to be the uh, the third corner, kind of like that de facto, you know, starter because so many uh, defenses play uh, sub packages, you know, 65, 70 percent nowadays. Um, so he's looked really good. And like I said, he's taken it, it's kind of an interesting dynamic, JP, right? Because you're, you're the, the, the veteran and you're competing for playing time. You want to be the guy out there majority of the time. But at the same time, you know, you want to bring guys along. So he's kind of mentoring Isaiah Rogers and Marvell tell and some of these other young corners that the Colts have. And Isaiah Rogers can absolutely play as you guys know. Um, but it's, it's Rogers asking facing uh, for, you know, subtle nuances and, you know, things of advice within this defense that he's picked up over the course of time in four years playing with Gus Bradley. So that's been fun to watch, but Brandon Faison's making plays, but it's also fun to see the offense, you know, take it, take advantage of the defense at times. There was a pump and go the other day uh, from Matt Ryan and Michael Pittman Jr. And Brandon Faison was the victim of that. So just because he understands the defense, you know, at a very high level, doesn't mean he can't get better. And um, that that's been on full display here in camp. It's fun to watch how the yin and the yang of the offense and defense is, is playing out. And I, I think starting next week, we're, we're going to get into the dog days of training camp leading into that first preseason game. So it's going to be good to have the game kind of break up the monotony of camp. And then, of course, the next week after that, you're going to have those joint practices with Detroit uh, before that second preseason game when the Lions come into town. Uh, but Brandon Faison, by and large, has looked really good, and you can see why you know Gus Bradley prioritized him and convinced the Colts to bring him in in free agency just along with the unique Ngakwe players that he had good familiar familiarity with and uh, think can assimilate in this defense in a short amount of time. I'm, I'm out of questions for you, Matt, man. I appreciate your time. Yeah, I'm out of questions. Yeah. Um, I, I got one. I got one question. We're gonna we're gonna take a, a nice little U turn. U turn, and we're gonna talk about you, Matt. Uh, oh, this is my this is my least favorite subject. By <laughs> you changed over not not too long ago to being the voice of the Colts when you're talking about you know making uh, the call in game calls stuff like that, going out at uh, practices and and making announcements and things of that nature. What, how has that changed your life? What, what's that done uh, for you uh, since you, you started this new position? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's changed my life in every way, to be honest with you. And, and not to get overly dramatic, but, you know, I, I was that that 10-year-old kid that knew what I wanted to do at a young age. And so for me to be able to, you know, sort of live out a dream and live out a passion, but be to be able to do it in the market in which I grew up in and do it for a team that I, you know, followed starting as a eight or nine year old and the, the Jim Harbaugh days and that captain comeback run in 1995. Like it's not, it's not lost on me, you know, this unbelievable opportunity that I have. And I certainly take it very seriously. I try to do right by the position every day. Um, you know, I, for home games at Lucas Oil Stadium, I mean, I have a 12-minute a drive from my driveway to, you know, my seat up in the press box in the radio booth. Um, wow. And so there's there's definitely a lot of pinch-me moments, you know, before usually it hits me around the national anthem. I sort of have to remind myself as I look out, you know, into a packed Lucas Oil Stadium, you know, not a seat open and people all the way up to the top in the rafters. I mean, I look out and say, you know, like, ho- holy crap, like, what am I about to do? How-, how lucky am I that I'm about to, you know, broadcast an NFL game to hundreds of thousands of people? How many people would love to do what I'm doing? And at the end of the day, like, I just get to talk about football. And so if I think I'm having a bad day, I just get to remind myself, like, you're not working for a, for a living. You don't have a real job. You know, there's a lot of people out there that would love to just talk about football and research these players and do play by play. And so, yeah, it's, it's certainly not lost on me, the magnitude of the position, how fun it is, how much I enjoy it. And those, those 20 games, you know, you throw in the preseason games as well, those 20 opportunities to do play by play in the NFL, man, it's the coolest job in the world. And I'm so thankful and so blessed that I get to do it. All right, that's going to come to the end of this episode of Believe in Colts. Thank you, Matt, for coming on. We very much appreciate it. Real quick, uh, let everybody know where they can find you on the social media that you have available. Yeah, you got it on Twitter, at Maytay Colts. That's Maytay Colts on Twitter. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of my Twitter feed is just content that we're that we're pumping out. So the Colts Audio Network, uh, in terms of podcasts, that's where you're going to you know, hear me a lot, obviously, this time of year up in training camp. So we've got radio shows, podcasts, interviews with players, interviews with coaches. We're loaded up every single day. We've got long form content every single day of the week this time of year. So check it out anywhere you get your podcast, Spotify, iTunes, doesn't matter. Search for us, uh, the Colts Audio Network, and all the audio is also on the traditional platforms as well. Colts.com and the Colts mobile app has everything too. Well. Again, that's it. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, was Gerard Powers with special guest Matt Taylor. And until next time, this was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And as usual, go Colts. Do you believe? 